These are the truths they hiding from you. I risk my life to tell y'all these truths. They pay you to not talk about things they don't want you to talk about. He was the godfather of the comedy. He was the godfather of all Black Lives Matter. Without him, Laugh Factory was not exist. We gave everything. We are so loyal. We're like some old hound dog. We are so loyal. We built that White House. You know we built it. The slaves built the White House. You think they call it the White House by mistake? In the realm of legendary comedians, one luminary stands out for not just delivering laughs, but also fearlessly tackling the pressing issues of racism and discrimination through his comedic genius. Paul Mooney was a trailblazer who never shied away from holding Hollywood accountable for its alleged racism and colorism. Hollywood likes you a certain way. They like you a certain way. They have a yeah, Hollywood's interesting. They like you a certain way when you're black. In the wake of the passing of this iconic yet controversial humorist, Cat Williams has allegedly stepped forward to call out the industry's alleged involvement in his demise. So, what exactly did he say? You see, Paul Mooney, the trailblazing comedian and writer renowned for his incisive wit and fearless commentary on race relations, passed away on May 19, 2021, at the age of 79. Mooney's death was attributed to a heart attack, which he suffered at his home in Oakland, California. His passing was a profound loss for the comedy community, and his fans worldwide, who mourned the loss of a truly unique and influential voice. The news of Mooney's death was first confirmed by his publicist, Cassandra Williams, who stated that he died peacefully in his home. Mooney's family later released a statement expressing their grief and appreciation for the outpouring of love and support from fans and colleagues. They highlighted Mooney's enduring legacy and his contributions to comedy and social discourse. Paul Mooney's death also sparked reflections on his unique brand of comedy, which often tackled sense sensitive and controversial topics head-on. Known for his unflinching honesty and sharp critique of societal issues, Mooney's routines were not just about making people laugh but also about making them think. However, the industry had not been thrilled by Mooney's comedy style. Mooney's comedy often focused on speaking the truth and exposing society's darker underbelly, much like what Cat Williams has been doing recently. Earlier this year, Cat Williams tore into the deviance and godlessness in Hollywood while speaking with NFL Hall of Famer Shannon Sharp. During the conversation, which aired on Sharp's Club Shay Shay. Williams opened up about how he expects prominent figures to be exposed in 2024 and the role that race plays in cancel culture. All of these uh, big dick deviants is all catching hell in 2024. The comedian went on to add, it don't matter if you Diddy or whoever you is, all lies will be exposed. That's all. And anyone who takes that the wrong way know why they take it the wrong way. The truth is the light. So why was Williams canceled? The comedian and asked Sharp rhetorically. Because in 30 years, I've done nothing but collect information, knowledge, and your secrets, he said. So if you and a man was in a corner doing something you wasn't supposed to be doing, somebody come to tell me. I gather that, he continued. I value that. I'll pay for that. Come tell me. I know so many things I shouldn't know, and they all know it. You don't make me the villain, not the guy that raises black children and ain't never done a hard in his life and don't have no stories of doing nobody dirty, and they'll just go out and lie. The industry doesn't mess with Cat because he didn't show up for the studio. No studios have ever said that. Williams' comments later extended to those he deemed as industry plants, including Kevin Hart. Cat Williams began by highlighting the astonishing trajectory of Kevin Hart's career in Hollywood by first questioning the unprecedented speed with which Hart achieved success. In 15 years in Hollywood, no one in Hollywood has a memory of going to a sold-out Kevin Hart show, there being a line for him ever getting a standing ovation at any well, comedy club. Williams went on and suggested that Hart's rapid ascent was unusual and posed the question of whether Hart had truly paid his dues in the competitive world of stand-up comedy. The comedian emphasized the significance of the journey and questioned whether Hart's seemingly instant success was indicative of a different narrative. He already had his deals when he got here. Have we heard of a comedian that came to LA and in his first year in LA, he had his own sitcom on network television and had his own movie called Soul Plane that he was leading? No. In the interview, Cat Williams introduced the term plant to describe someone who seemingly appears out of nowhere and attains success without the traditional struggles that comedians often face, and then claims they are self-made. Williams then drew attention to the fact that Kevin Hart's documentary with Chris Rock revealed his comedy roots on the East Coast. He pointed to a perceived contradiction in Hart's narrative, noting, he just did his documentary with Chris Rock, where he shows you that his whole upbringing in comedy was on the East Coast. 
So how, simultaneously, was he here in Los Angeles doing the same thing? It didn't happen. Williams probed into the inconsistencies in Hart's story, challenging the widely accepted narrative of an overnight success. Cat Williams went on to expose a whole lineup of comedians and elites who are being used to push the industry's evil agenda. One person who was well aware of this evil agenda and wanted nothing to do with it was Paul Mooney. Mooney's dislike for the industry was so obvious that several celebrities have called out the industry for trying to eliminate him. One comedian who spoke about Mooney is Pierre. In 2021, Pierre shared a personal and heartfelt account of his experiences and interactions with the iconic comedian, Paul Mooney. He began by recounting his first encounter with Mooney in 1987, when Mooney opened for Eddie Murphy during the Raw tour. Pierre was struck by Mooney's fearless and unapologetic commentary about white people, something he had never witnessed before in comedy. And I remember hearing this guy, this guy was talking about white folks so bad. And I was like, who is this dude? This man is just talking about white folks like crazy. I never heard nobody talk about white people like that before. Pierre's admiration for Mooney grew as he described frequenting the comedy store in Hollywood, a mecca for comedians. Paul Mooney had a unique standing at the club, always performing last and holding the audience in a grip of unfiltered truth-telling. Pierre emphasized that Mooney's candid approach caused many white audience members to exit the room within minutes, which was a testament to his uncompromising style. Despite his outspokenness, Mooney's influence on other comedians, including Pierre, was profound. Pierre highlighted the relief and joy he felt watching Mooney address subjects that many people wanted to talk about but were afraid to. Mooney provided a voice for those who shared his perspectives. Over time, Pierre and Mooney developed a friendship, and Pierre shared amusing anecdotes about their interactions. He affectionately referred to Mooney as Paul Cooney in their playful exchanges. Despite Mooney's stern exterior, Pierre recognized the authenticity and courage in his comedy. Pierre also praised Mooney for his willingness to share jokes and material with other comedians, including the iconic Richard Pryor. This generosity and humility set Mooney apart in an industry often characterized by competitiveness. The comedian also shed light on Mooney's experiences and struggles, such as performing in smaller venues like Chitlin Circuits when mainstream comedy clubs were less receptive to his work. Pierre emphasized that many people, particularly the younger generation who may only be familiar with Mooney through Dave Chappelle, might not fully grasp the depth of Mooney's legacy and the sacrifices he made. Another comedian who spoke about Mooney's prowess is D.L. Hewley. Hewley shared heartfelt and profound insights into his experiences and interactions with the legendary comedian, Paul Mooney, in 2021. He spoke of the invaluable lessons he learned from Paul Mooney during their time together. Mooney, in his various roles, was a mentor, imparting wisdom about performance, fearlessness, channeling anger, and even demonstrating what not to do. I can say this almost every single time I was around Paul, I learned something. Uh, he's one of the rare individuals I can point to in my life where I know that I learned something throughout every interaction. Mooney's complexity was a recurring theme in Hewley's tribute. While some may have described him as complicated, Hewley saw Mooney's indignant and acerbic approach to comedy as a unique attribute. He acknowledged that Mooney wasn't necessarily warm, but he was committed to his craft and unapologetically vocal about his contributions to the world of comedy. He had a way of delving into subjects uh, that uh, very few people would do, but in a way that it was indignant and angry and acerbic. A central aspect of Mooney's character that Hewley highlighted was his fervent belief that he was underappreciated. Paul Mooney was relentless in asserting the greatness of his work and his role in moving the needle in comedy. His assertiveness, although at times polarizing, was a testament to his unwavering dedication to the art form he loved. In a poignant anecdote, Hewley shared a final memory of Mooney in Oakland, surrounded by fellow comedians. Mooney's presence at these late-night gatherings was a hallmark of his commitment to comedy. The image of him with champagne on ice, sharing his incisive humor, remains etched in Hewley's memory. Another comedian who spoke about Mooney is Dave Chappelle. Paul Mooney's presence on Dave Chappelle's iconic television program, Chappelle's Show, was a transformative moment, introducing him to younger generations and leaving an indelible mark on comedy. In a candid moment captured by TMZ in 2021 outside the Soho Grand Hotel in New York City, Chappelle expressed his deep respect and admiration for the man who had gained widespread recognition as a writer for the comedy icon, Richard Pryor. Chappelle's heartfelt words resonated with the comedy community and fans alike. Chappelle's reverence for Mooney was palpable as he declared, I want to shout out every comedian on earth when the best that ever did it passed away today. His legacy will live forever. 
We did everything from Richard Pryor's show to Chappelle's show. This tribute encapsulated Mooney's remarkable contributions to the world of comedy. What's more, even the controversial Steve Harvey had positive things to say concerning the comedian. In 2021, Steve Harvey shared a poignant and detailed tribute to the iconic comedian Paul Mooney on his radio show. Harvey's personal connection with Mooney, dating back to the early 90s, added depth and warmth to his homage. Harvey recounted his initial encounter with Mooney at Caroline's in New York, during the time when he was performing at the Apollo Theater. Mooney would often visit the Apollo late at night, and their friendship began with casual meals together. The duo's camaraderie extended to Los Angeles, where they both ventured into writing rooms, solidifying their bond in the world of comedy. Steve Harvey emphasized that comedians, especially those who never met Paul Mooney, owed him a significant debt of gratitude. He highlighted Mooney's pioneering role in comedy, suggesting that Mooney was the embodiment of what Def Jam comedy represented even before it officially existed. Mooney was known for tackling bold and controversial subjects in front of large audiences, often defying societal norms and challenging the status quo. Furthermore, Harvey underscored that Paul Mooney played a pivotal role in shaping the careers of some of the greatest comedians. His influence extended beyond merely providing jokes. He played an essential part in the success and growth of legends such as Richard Pryor, Flip Wilson, and Red Fox. His contributions were foundational in molding their comedic identities and voices. Steve Harvey stressed that Paul Mooney was a genuine maverick in comedy. Mooney was not motivated by mainstream recognition or fame. Instead, he was entirely dedicated to the craft of comedy itself. His performances were characterized by their fearless and unapologetic nature. He would often broach controversial subjects, aiming to provoke thought and laughter while challenging societal norms. In his closing remarks, Harvey offered high praise for Paul Mooney, describing him as one of the comedy greats. Harvey's tribute was a heartfelt acknowledgement of the profound and lasting impact Mooney had on the comedy community. He made it clear that anyone who had not witnessed a Paul Mooney performance had missed a unique and extraordinary talent in the world of stand up comedy. Harvey's tribute was a moving testament to the legacy of Paul Mooney. Born on August 4, 1941 in Shreveport, Louisiana, Mooney entered this world as Paul Gladney, but it was the profound influence of the women who raised him, particularly his maternal grandmother, Aimee Ely, that shaped both his life and his comedic persona. It was his beloved grandmother who bestowed upon him the memorable stage name Mooney, a moniker that would become synonymous with wit and humor. Despite relocating to Oakland at the tender age of seven, the deep-seated root of his Southern upbringing left an indelible mark on him. Mooney's childhood was steeped in the wisdom and values instilled in him by his grandmother, which he held dear throughout his life. Reflecting on his upbringing, he once remarked, I don't do because my grandmother raised me. I think like an old black Southern woman. If I'd have done coke, I'd probably be cooking pancakes. This profound connection to his heritage and the strong matriarchal influence he received became fundamental in shaping his comedic identity. During his teenage years, Mooney's talents extended beyond the realm of comedy. He showcased his agility and artistic flair as a dancer, even making appearances on the popular TV show, Dance Party. However, it was a pivotal moment in the early 60s that would forever alter the course of his life. Witnessing the legendary Lenny Bruce perform on stage, Mooney was struck by an epiphany that would lead him to discover his true calling, comedy. In the tumultuous late 1960s, as Mooney was steadily establishing himself as an up-and-coming comedian, a fateful encounter would change the trajectory of his career forever. He crossed paths with another burgeoning comic luminary, Richard Pryor, who would become a lifelong friend and collaborator. Mooney reminisced about their initial meeting during an interview with Pop Matters, recalling, I was having a party and a friend of my sisters who was dancing at the Whiskey A Go Go had dated Richard and brought him to the apartment. This was during the era of Bob and Carol and Ted and Alice when everybody was sleeping with everybody. So Richard came in and said, let's all get into the bed and have an O, and I threw him out. Mooney and Pryor would forge one of the most fruitful partnerships in the history of comedy. During a time when it was a rarity to see black television writers, Mooney and Pryor were penning episodes of Sanford and Son in Good Times. Mooney and Pryor continued their collaborations on Pryor's classic stand-up album including Is It Something I Said, Bicentennial N, and Live on the Sunset Strip, as well as Pryor's semi-autobiographical film Jojo Dancer, Your Life is Calling. Pryor was tapped to host Saturday Night Live during its inaugural season in 1975. Much to Lorne Michaels' chagrin, he insisted that Mooney come aboard as a writer. Mooney wrote Word Association, one of the best skits in the history of the show, for Pryor and Chevy Chase. I, the idea sprung from Michaels and the NBC executives being nervous about Pryor and Mooney 
Mooney being on the show. After all the BS I've been put through to get here, the effing cross-examination Lauren subjects me to, I decide to do a job interview of my own, Mooney later said. Mooney's ascent to comedic stardom took a significant step in 1977, when he assumed the role of head writer for NBC's The Richard Pryor Show. Though only four episodes of this groundbreaking program would ultimately make it to the airwaves, the impact of Mooney's writing was nothing short of revolutionary. His comedic genius blazed a trail that many would follow in the years to come. Additionally, Mooney was notorious for spilling the tea like nobody's business. He had that bold-as-brass attitude and honey. He was all about airing out Hollywood's dirty laundry. The man had no chill when it came to outing the wickedness festering in the glitzy world of celebs. For over three decades, Mooney's unique position, nestled in the orbit of the iconic Richard Pryor, provided him not just with a front-row seat, but with an insider's pass to the inner sanctum of Tinseltown. In this unique role, he bore witness to the unseemly facets of racism, power dynamics, and disloyalty that festered beneath the veneer of glitz and glamour. In fact, personality-wise, he was referred to by the words such as cocky, straightforward, sharp tongue, and rude. What's more, Paul once said that he derives his comedy from his experiences. Additionally, in a revealing 2008 interview with Real Black TV, he offered tantalizing morsels of insight into the intricate dance of race, reputation, and compromise that characterized Hollywood. With a wry smile, he provocatively quipped, Hollywood's interesting, they like you a certain way when you're black. You damn near have to be a black Anglo-Saxon. This candid admission hinted at the industry's inherent bias, one that required black artists to reshape themselves into a sanitized image, forsaking their true selves for a shot at acceptance. But Mooney was having none of it. He was unapologetically himself, a man who recognized that the spotlight often came at the cost of authenticity. With an unwavering resolve, he stood against the current, fully aware of the unwritten rules dictating the treatment of black talents in Hollywood. His careful watching of the famous Sidney Poitier, who was often called the best example of a quote-unquote perfect N in Hollywood, probably helped make his beliefs stronger. Poitier did an amazing job with the roles he was given, but even though he was really respected, he still had to deal with Hollywood's biases. When he slapped a white man in the movie In the Heat of the Night in 1969, things changed a lot. This big change showed that the perfect image Hollywood showed wasn't as strong as it seemed. Aside from that, in a no-holds-barred 2010 interview with Pop Matters, Mooney openly exposed the fickleness that lurked beneath Hollywood's veneer of loyalty. White people are not very loyal to their perfect N or to their house ends. As soon as they're not in, they'll drop them like a hot potato, he candidly remarked. These words were like a piercing arrow, tearing through the illusions that often masked the industry's true nature. What's more, Mooney was never shy in calling out Hollywood elites. In fact, he totally called out a certain talk show, Diva, you know, the one who's always in the spotlight. Word on the street is that Mooney threw some serious shade, hinting that she might have a secret longing to switch shades herself, if you catch my drift. And oh my, he didn't stop there. He went all in, dubbing her a degree-carrying Aunt Jemima. He said, Oprah is a double agent. Oprah is a danger to us. Oprah is Aunt Jemima with a degree. Mooney's comments were in reference to when the talk show Diva revealed in an interview with Barbara Walters that she actually once thought of being white. Did you ever wish you were white? Mm. Yeah. At the time, it was a controversial statement that was met with more groans than laughs. But today, Queen O has been disappointing many. Paul Mooney has never trusted her, which is why he made several jokes about her. In any case, Mooney's brilliance and incisive social commentary came to the forefront in his infamous Chappelle's show sketch, Ask a Black Dude. With an air of audacious candor, he dissected the paradox of being black in America with a sly grin and a sardonic tone. He provocatively declared, everybody wanna be an N, but don't nobody wanna be an N. This acerbic statement was a direct critique of mainstream media's penchant for appropriating black culture while conveniently erasing its origins. Icons like Lionel Richie, Michael Jackson, and Tina Turner had all been plucked from the rich tapestry of black culture, repackaged as pop and rock stars, their roots discarded for the sake of marketability. Mooney's astute observations didn't merely dabble in veiled critique. He wielded humor as a potent weapon of truth. He cunningly warned, that's what I told some black people the other night at my show. I said, don't get too fond of me, because white folks will come in and take me. They only want 
fans to have a little bit of fun. This provocative assertion hinted at the industry's tendency to extract fleeting amusement from black talents while remaining reluctant to grant them true agency and authority. Mooney's filmography, though modest in volume, was remarkably pointed in its choices, serving as a testament to his unyielding commitment to shedding light on Hollywood's darker corners. His appearances in Robert Townsend's Hollywood Shuffle and Spike Lee's Bamboozled were strategic moves that positioned him as a disruptor of Hollywood's norms. In Hollywood Shuffle, Mooney portrayed an NAACP president spearheading a protest against Townsend's character, who portrayed a demeaning stereotype in a black exploitation film. The rallying cry, they'll never play the Rambos until they stop playing the Sambos, was a poignant critique of the exploitative cycle perpetuated by Hollywood. Mooney's character dissected the disturbing trend of black actors embracing degrading roles crafted by white creators, highlighting the industry's complicity in perpetuating harmful stereotypes. The film Bamboozled continued Mooney's exploration of Hollywood's shadows. His role as Junebug, a stand-up comic grappling with the tension between authenticity and crossover success, mirrored Mooney's own convictions. Junebug, like Mooney, staunchly refused to compromise his principles for the allure of stardom. When questioned about his absence from the grand stage, Junebug's retort was a declaration of defiance. I got too much pride, too much uh, dignity, integrity. I can't do that Hollywood stuff, man. I can't say that stuff they want me to say. The parallels between Junebug's fictional struggle and Mooney's real-life journey were striking. Throughout his career, Mooney remained resolute in the face of Hollywood's seductive promises, steadfastly standing his ground against the allure of wealth and fame. He became a sentinel of authenticity in an industry that all too often valued facades over substance. However, it appears it did not take long for Hollywood to fight back. Rumors are that it's not all just a coincidence that his controversies seem to hit the headlines at the perfect moments. Some whisper that Hollywood might have been pulling the strings behind the scenes, using the media to expose his missteps in an attempt to put a muzzle on him. Among the allegations that shook the industry was the claim that Mooney had S-aid Richard Pryor's son. It was in 2019 that Richard Pryor's ex-bodyguard, Roshan Khan, came forward with these shocking accusations. In an interview with Comedy Hype, Khan boldly stated that Mooney had committed this heinous act when Pryor's son was just a child. Even more disturbing, Khan revealed that Pryor himself had once expressed a desire to see Mooney meet a dark fate as a result of the alleged incident. Adding weight to the claims, Jennifer Lee Pryor, Richard Pryor's widow, confirmed the allegations made by Khan. The truth seemed to be unraveling, with Pryor's son eventually confirming that he had been a victim of S.A. However, he never explicitly named Mooney as his assailant. Despite the seriousness of these allegations, no formal charges were ever brought against Mooney during his lifetime. Tragically, Mooney passed away on May 19, 2021, at the age of 79, leaving behind a legacy overshadowed by controversy and unanswered questions. In any case, Paul Mooney was, unequivocally, a figure who defied commodification. He was a rare and fearless voice in comedy, unafraid to spotlight the white supremacist underpinnings that have long been woven into the fabric of the American project. He stood as a guardian of black culture, using his humor as a weapon to confront the oppressive forces that sought to deny it and appropriate it for for their own ends. Mooney's legacy endures as a testament to the transformative power of comedy and its ability to challenge, enlighten, and empower. His work continues to inspire, provoke thought, and remind us of the enduring importance of speaking truth to power through humor. Anyway, that's it for this video, folks. Bye.